So every port in the world requires a pilot. It wouldn't be good for the economy if your waterway was clogged with shipwrecks. While you're in it, it's completely absorbing. You wind up uh, sort of becoming one. You're really conscious, really tuned in to how the ship is responding to the conditions. It can take the most seasoned sailors by surprise at how nasty the bar is. When you have 1,200 miles of river flowing 15 million gallons of water a minute into a Pacific Ocean that is as vast, that creates some pretty dramatic passages. There's been thousands of shipwrecks at the mouth of the river and along the shoreline of ships attempting to find and gain entry to the Columbia River. I think a lot of people, when they think shipwrecks, they think treasure. And quite honestly, most of the shipwrecks don't involve treasure. We have a uh, rigging block found on the beach. The reason that we're interested in them is because it's part of the historical record, and we want to get that record as accurate as possible. We start with history, and history says a ship wrecked in this vicinity. We'll go out and we'll use our, our materials, uh, side scan sonar, magnetometers, things like that, to try to localize the area. The state archaeologist has said there are over 3,000 known wrecks in Oregon waters, and he really only has data on about 300 of those. So there's a lot of information out there to be had, and all of that is history of our culture and other cultures, foreign ships that have come and wrecked. With shipwrecks, you know, you have human drama, you have potential for tragedy, and certainly there is tragic tales to be told with shipwrecks. Because we have skilled and qualified pilots that make transiting the river safer today doesn't mean that the danger's gone. It's still a river, and there's still a lot of water and a lot of wind. The dangers are still present.